let's get the uh, the party started. Hello, everybody, and thank you for joining me today on Fliplets: How Organizations Are Managing the Return to the Office, which is obviously a, a very hot topic uh, in the US and the UK right now. Um, my name is Ian Broom. I'm uh, the CEO and one of the two founders of Fliplet, and I'll be your host today. And I have a couple of special guests joining me as well. Uh, so the agenda for today is this webinar will take about uh, 55 minutes um, and it will cover a discussion about uh, two organizations plans for returning to the office. Um, we'll then, I will then talk about uh, Fliplet's uh, upcoming return to the office app and how we intended it to work. Uh, we will, I will then demo the app um, and then at the very end we'll have Q&A for, for five to ten minutes. So. Uh, we are using Zoom, as I'm sure most of you are aware. Uh, so if you have any questions at any point, please just post them into the chat. Uh, I've got a couple of colleagues who uh, will review those uh, questions throughout the uh, webinar and pose them to me or our guests at the end. Uh, so yeah, please submit any questions you have at any time in chat. Okay, so your speakers today, uh, myself, who I've already introduced, we're also going to be joined by Sean Curran. He's the head of legal technology at Travis Smith and Jerry Justice, the CIO at Benesh. So Travis Smith is a, a UK based or predominantly UK based law firm, although I think they have an office in France as well. Um, and Benesh is a US uh, law firm uh, headquartered in Cleveland, but with uh, offices across uh, North America. Uh, so a quick introduction to Fliplet, in case there's anybody new to Fliplet on today's call. Uh, so Fliplet is a very easy uh, low-code or no-code prefab app builder. Uh, we use the word prefab because most of the capabilities that our customers want to, uh, to add to their app is already available in Fliplet. Fliplet also comes with all the infrastructure you need to get your app up and going, so you don't have to worry about setting up servers or managing APIs or anything like this. Uh, it's even uh, kind of one click build and launch to, to the app stores. Um, so it's a very easy tool. And if you haven't had a play with it, I encourage you to go and sign up for a free account and give it a go. Uh, and uh, hopefully today's demo and discussion will uh, get you excited about how you can use Fliplet at your organization. Um, okay, so let's dive into a bit of a conversation. Um, uh, Mike, if you can assist me with unmuting Jerry and Sean, that would be appreciated. Um, and I'm just going to let uh, my guests introduce themselves and then give us a bit of an update on how their organization is managing uh, the return to the office. So uh, Jerry or Sean, who would like to kick off? Uh, hi, everybody. Can you hear me? Yep, we can hear Sean. Um, so firstly, I'd just like to say apologies for not doing video. Um, I tried to cut my own hair the other day, like the others, and um, I made a bit of a oh, we want to see it. No, it's so bad. So um, I had to just cut it all off. I didn't have a guard either, so it was like a zero. So um, everybody's saying that I actually properly look glass weeds in now. Um, a bit of a skinhead, so yeah. And I don't have the nice head of hair that I do in that picture, so that's why I've not done video today. But um, So yeah, I'm Sean Curran, Head of Legal Technology at Travis Smith. I've been with Travis Smith now for just over a year. My background is that I've worked at various different law firms, both UK national and international. So I was at Latham Watkins and Freshfields, um, and also a small Scottish law firm called McGregor's a long time ago, uh, which was um, merged with Pinsent Masons. And I've done various different roles in my career. I was a sort of application engineer, uh, te technology architect, uh, and now sort of heading up a team um, where we focus on some of the more innovative legal technology that has come to market over the last few years, like um, document automation, electronic signing, etc. Uh, we also have the um, ED, the e-disclosure team set within legal technology in Travis Smith. Um, we're also responsible for some of the other more operational technologies like document management systems. Um, we use Fliplet. We've, we've used it for a few apps. We, use, um, we, we created an employment app for our clients so that they could get sort of employment know-how. Uh, and we've used it also similar to the return to work thing, which I'm sure we'll get on to, but for a sort of a menu for our in-house kitchen so that they could get food orders from clients uh, in preparation for them coming to the office to get food. So I think the, the argument there was that it allowed us to better manage our stock, knowing what people wanted before they actually came along to have client lunches and client dinners and stuff. Cool, that's me. Thanks. Fantastic, thanks, Sean. Uh, Jerry, do you want to introduce yourself? 
Sure. My name is Jerry Justice. I'm based out of our Cleveland office. Uh, we're an Amlaw 200 firm. I've been in uh, the legal field for about five years now. Prior to that, I was in accounting, a uh, large regional firm for about 12 years. So uh, decent background in professional services and technology related to. Uh, I will say we've been using FlipBook for about two years. Um, what we've liked about the platform is the ability to just keep adding on value to our clients and primarily that's been internal um, as things come up. And I think COVID has pointed that out, um, the value of just being able to add things that already are available to them through this mobile platform has been real value. So in short, that's, that's me. Excellent. Thank you, guys. Well, Sean, would you like to kick off and, and tell us a bit about uh, how Travis Smith is intending to manage the return to work? And, and if you get stuck, there's some kind of talking points from uh, the, uh, the webinar agenda on the screen uh, to help you out. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we've not we've not done a huge amount of thinking on this and I'm actually not hugely or massively close to um, that process. We are obviously like every other firm trying to figure out just how a return to work um, might look like and, and what, what that might look like in, in the next few months. Uh, we are um, as concerned as everybody else about um, asking your employees to use public transport and I'm sure we'll be encouraging our employees to um, either walk, run or cycle to work wherever possible. However, that creates a bit of a challenge for us in the fact that we only have a certain number of showers um, and we're only limited by the number of showers people can have. So uh, we end up with um, a, a problem whereby people haven't had to um, be near to individuals in the tube, but actually then they're standing in, in a shower, in a cramped shower, or they're having to socially distance in the queue outside the showers, which just isn't feasible, especially when you've got sort of large numbers of um, people going back to the office. So broadly, we think that actually maybe 25% of people would be able to go into the office at any one time, but it could be quite a challenging and, and, and process for us to manage that by the time we actually get everybody into the office and then get everybody out of the office without people having to be in close quarters with each other, it will be such a huge amount of time and effort that um, the people who are working from home will actually be more productive um, broadly. So we're just trying to sort of to work through that just now. I think um, we've spoken, I spoke to Chris at Flipbook before, but I can see pe pe personally a bit of a gap in the market for some form of return to work technology, whereby um, various different products and services are added into some kind of scheduling system where you know if you want to go for a sandwich at from your canteen at lunchtime then you'd have to sort of book that sandwich and order that sandwich in advance and then you'd have a delivery slot to be able to go down to the canteen and pick that sandwich up uh, you also want to make sure that you're not in the lift at the same time as others so there'd have to be some data analysis to make sure that sort of one or two people would be in the lift at any one time based on any actions and events that they had to carry out uh, it gets quite complicated if you're trying to manage the number of people that are in lifts number of people that are on stairwells, <clears throat> queuing up outside your canteen. Uh, it all gets very tricky to, to sort of manage, but um, we definitely see a need for some form of scheduling and ordering application that can be completely um, generic to any type of product or service. You know, people are probably going to have to book a shower uh, in the mornings and have a delivery uh, a slot in the shower and they'll have to get in and out in a certain time and there'll be a queue outside of people waiting and they'll have to enter from a certain bit and exit from a certain bit. Um, we'll have people having to go in and clean the showers regularly which is going to be quite challenging um, so there'll be downtime as well. Uh, so yeah I think it's it's creating a lot of challenges and it's probably not just within the legal industry or, or the office environment within um, the city but you know restaurants and pubs and all sorts of different businesses will have this same challenge. If you're in a pub, how do you manage the number of people that go to the toilet at the same time? How do you manage the number of people at the, at the bar at the same time? And I think over the next year, we'll see a huge increase in sort of Uber Eats type delivery services, as I say, for various different products and services, both external to our company and the products and services that we consume internally, um, like canteens or room bookings or lifts, etc. So I think the low code, no code app platforms are going to become very valuable for a quick way of spinning up services to have that ordering capability and then also having a dashboard capability for the people who are providing that service um, so that they can track that and sort of deliver on that as well. Um, so you, we've got like, you know, if we've got room booking software um, that we use, but actually does that expand out to ordering food from the canteen, etc.? Probably not. So that flexibility of the local local platforms is going to be quite valuable, we think. 
Um, and just before we move on to Jerry, because uh, Sean, you'll care more about the UK, whereas Jerry will care more about the US. Um, so uh, have you, are you aware of any internal conversations at Travis Smith based on the UK recent uh, guidance around how workplaces must be kept safe? Was there anything there that surprised you or, or kind of added additional complexity to the plans that you had uh, in place or, or discussed prior to the, I think they call it the COVID-19 safe or something guidance? Yeah, no, I don't think that, I don't think that's certainly changed their approach or policy. We've got um, a working group internally that are continuing to look at how we might return to work and certainly the, the guidance from Boris over the last few days and, and the government hasn't changed that dramatically. I know there's been some relaxation of certain rules, but um, as it stands at the moment, we're continuing to look at how we would return to work, but we haven't got any clear defined definition of how that how that might work for, for us and um, you know there's a lot of unanswered questions and, and we don't um, we haven't quite got the answer to all of them yet. Excellent cool thank you. Uh, Jerry uh, how, uh, how are you thinking about it in the US? Well I'll give you a little kind of what we've done so far and then kind of some insights on what we think from a tech and kind of an impact side so you know the first thing I'll say is you know, this is really an in progress and very observational. That's how we're approaching it. Um, because even the rules that the, both the state governments and the federal governments have laid out, they don't necessarily match up neatly or the math doesn't work. Like we have certain stages and you have to meet certain criteria. And, you know, in Ohio here, we're actually opening up even though we don't technically meet those criteria, but that's because they're actually testing more, which changes the mathematics. Um, so I think everybody is kind of in this, you know, progress slash observational mode. Uh, but as a firm, what we've done is I think one first, all the prep we can do. So I'm sure this is similar to other people, but you know, um, the, the certain bombings we can do within the, the offices, I forget what they call it, but there's certain kind of clear bombing we can do every two weeks just to make sure we're keeping those facilities as clean as possible. We've increased the high touch facility cycles with our cleaners. Um, so a lot of prep and even just, you know, surveying our employees and saying, what do you think? Because a lot of this really is perception. Um, and I don't mean that in negative or positive, but, you know, if you feel threatened or you don't want to go to work versus, hey, I think everything's okay. So we're trying to look at it from all angles. And we have an internal team that's included me and HR and, and other facilities people to kind of talk this out weekly. So that's kind of how we've done it is take kind of a, a weekly cadence on looking back and seeing what we can do. Um, you know, we've even approached kind of two prongs. So one, we kind of have this approach of, okay, what do we do? We're going to open up. We know that, right? So um, we also see in certain areas, Chicago versus Cleveland, it's different. Chicago is a little more tighter. The governor's a little more constringent. In Ohio, I think he is, but he's realizing the business needs to open up. So we even have to be aware kind of geographically what's going on in those areas. So we're trying to look at geography, people, and the reality of the pandemic. Um, so, so it's a lot of moving pieces, but when I say two prongs, so one was just, what do we do to open up? But also we're going to do a kind of a stay in place with our equipment. So anything we provided or went to home and, and is, is provided this home office, we want that to stay where it's at. We don't want anybody bringing anything back in one for exposure reasons Two for, you know, as we get into the fall, is there going to be another cycle? Nobody knows. So I don't know if that helps, you know, but just kind of, that's the kind of two different approaches we've taken. Um, and then really just, you know, what do we do from a, you know, cleansing point of view, my staff versus, you know, we, we touch a lot of other people's equipment. Um, there are some local providers that are do some cleansing uh, cabinets and things like that. So we're trying to look at that. So I think right now it's really just a lot of, we're probably a pure guess here, two weeks out from some, you know, release of restrictions for our firm and bringing people back in. Um, pure my take, not, not maybe the firms at this point, but that's kind of the guess. Um, so we'll just start and kind of work at that and be observational and make adjustments as we go. Um, I think, um, you know, we've adjusted uh, conference room rules, like how many people could be in a room. We've actually looked at every office, uh, our facilities person and said, okay, who's too close? And we've already made adjustments uh, based on the spatial constraints. Um, now they're not there yet, but at least when they come back in, we'll say, well, we've, we've kind of observed this and this is what we're doing. I think the big challenges we find, it depends on your footprint in your office is a lot of our cubes are five foot height and that tends to be kind of a walking path height so what do we do there so i think that's the thing that's left out yet so again i'm, I'm not kind of the all being expert at the firm it's kind of a collective 
um, approach. Um, so I don't know so much the compliance and the other pieces. And one of the things I will say is we are looking at what do we do from a governmental point of view, kind of the state of Ohio has indicated, look, you have to kind of watch this kind of saturation, the amount of people, you know, test people. Um, we know, especially as law firms, there's a lot of compliance and a lot of PHI and some things in there that could be, you know, a rub the other way. So we're trying to figure out where we can in the middle there to show some observational you know, monitoring, but also protect the privacy, you know, of our employees and our people. So I think we're still figuring that out, but that's something that, that kind of came to the top of, you know, how do we do this right? Um, so we think there's a balance there um, to be able to give people, you know, hey, how you doing? Are you questioning? Are you making sure you're okay? And kind of knowing who's in the office, uh, but also observing some of those privacies. So, so that's kind of some broad strokes. Um, I'd say from the tech side, you know, again, we've kind of used uh, both a combination of Fliplet and uh, Microsoft 365. Um, because we have deeper stuff in there and some of that stuff's, you know, prior rooted stuff and it's, it's broader information that doesn't play well, maybe in a, in a seamless kind of simple app, but we can drive people to that for that deeper stuff. So we kind of did a combination of the fliplet kind of, that's kind of the, the front side and the easy access. But if you want to get deep and kind of get into some of the bowels of stuff, then, you know, that would directly link you kind of seamlessly from the app. So we kind of used a combination of, of technologies. And I do agree. I think that one of the pieces we look at is, how do we get some observational capacity feel for who's in our office when just to, so we know kind of, okay, well, wait, we're, we're at 80%. We got to really kind of think differently here or we're at 50 and we're doing okay. So I don't think we've solved that yet, but I think some kind of app, some kind of survey, some kind of combination of that is kind of where we left it at kind of our last meeting. So just kind of some general observations I've seen. And, uh, you know, um, I do think the technology has played a, a unbelievable role in, in this whole thing. And I think it'll continue to. Yeah, thanks so much, guys. Um, and in the interest of time, I might just move on with covering some slides because a couple of questions I have to ask you, I've realized some of the slides I've prepared might actually uh, fuel your answers. So, um, so we'll come back uh, to you guys, hopefully at the end for any, any additional comments. Um, okay, so. Uh, I thought just before I dive too, too into this um, and knowing that uh, quite a few of the people on today's call kind of straddle not only internal uh, solutions, but also customer facing solutions. Um, what I was uh, interested to see that Wilson Sincini's uh, kind of product creation uh, division uh, I think it's called 650. Um, they have already produced uh, and started to promote a client facing return to work solution, um, which actually manages many of the things that we realized through conversations with customers, we would need to offer our customers. Um, and of course, uh, with Fliplet, you guys are more than welcome to take Fliplet and produce a solution that you can then sell to your customers. So um, anyway, this, uh, this solution from Wilson Sassini includes an assessment tool to help businesses determine their back to workplace readiness, policies to govern how businesses transition their employees back to the office, and a questionnaire screening system that businesses can use daily to determine who can safely enter the workplace. Uh, and I think, Jerry, you were just referring to the kind of contentious uh, uh, final point there, which is, you know, are we uh, all going to be screening our customers for, uh, sorry, our staff for safety. Um, and, and if so, what do we do with that data? How do we protect it, et cetera, which is something that Fliplet has been considering a lot over the last week while producing uh, what I'm about to show you. So why did we decide to build the uh, uh, return to office app or the RTO app. Um, and, and this is just a repeat from some of you who have seen our app plan, um, which a little screenshot of it is, is off onto the right side of this screen. Um, we, we believe that there is uh, value in organizations having a return to office app um, so that uh, countries and state because countries and states may relax and tighten rules depending on infection rates, which Jerry referred to, you know, there's, he described a couple of different states having different rules um, and changing them at different times. Um, uh, you've also got that organizations may prefer to implement different or additional rules uh, to keep their staff safe, kind of going beyond what the government guidelines have suggested. And I would say that that's particularly relevant to office-based uh, organizations where we're, we're very fortunate. We have the luxury of saying to our staff, maybe stay working from home if you don't need to come in. Um, 
governments have already started to allude to, although uh, details are a bit scarce at the moment about auditing and reporting requirements. Um, and so one of the aspects that Fliplet has taken into consideration is how are we going to collect data that our customers may have to then use to demonstrate that they are taking their obligation seriously. Uh, of course, there's going to be lots of different resources uh, that need to be shared, such as uh, desks, meeting rooms, and other physical spaces. Uh, and these will have to be managed carefully. Um, uh, and then staff will also want to see, and, and Jerry used the word perception, which I noted down, uh, staff will want to see that management is doing uh, what, what management is doing to ensure safety uh, in managing the return to the office. So they're the primary reasons why we uh, wanted to produce this app. Um, and, and then there's been also quite a lot of exciting things mentioned in the world of apps and Apple and Google coming together and, and you know, partnering up on some great tracking technology. And I'm sure you guys are all aware of the various countries that have released COVID-19 tracking apps. So I thought rather than uh, potentially go into the rest of this presentation with people thinking, okay, Fliplet has built one of those apps, I figured I'd start with what the app will not do. So just to be clear, I'm not being negative straight out of the gate. I'm just trying to set expectations and, and possibly proactively answer some questions that people might have come to this webinar uh, to, to get answers. Um, so the first is that Fliplet's app will not automatically monitor the rules from each jurisdiction. And that's based on the fact that we believe most of our customers will probably go above and beyond the minimum requirements uh, because they, they take their duty of care very seriously. Uh, Fliplet will not uh, enforce a standard set of rules. Uh, you will be able to customize how this app works for your organization. Um, the app will not monitor who comes into contact with who. So we will not be able to automatically say that um, uh, Ian and Chris and Mike uh, were in the same room together and, and they breached social distancing. They came within two meters of each other. The app will not do that. Um, uh, our app will not infringe on people's privacy. Uh, any data collected will be consciously provided by the user uh, and organizations will be able to proactively explain what they're going to do with any data collected from their staff. Um, and the app will not plan social distancing and floor plans within your office. So I've seen quite a few tools where you upload a floor plan and it gives you kind of a um, uh, like a circle and you can go around stamping the circle and it, it's kind of designed to help you very rapidly plan how close you can have people inside your office. Uh, Fliplet is not building that solution. Our app will not do that. It will only help you enforce the standards that you decide on. So uh, moving on to a slightly more optimistic topic, what will the app do if it won't do all of those things? So the app will play a critical role in enforcing an employer's duty of care for staff. So the way it will do this, it will provide information and guidance that is easy for employers to update. It will assist with tracking people's office attendance and their health status. Uh, and it will offer an audit trail of who may have come into contact with infected staff, assuming that uh, you collect the information about who has been infected. Therefore, you can tell other people based off the audit trail, look, uh, Ian has come down with COVID. You came in contact with him. Uh, you know, he was on the same floor as you in the office. Uh, in the last seven days, you might want to work from home as well. Um, we will make it easy to decentralize office management and office rules. We have already received feedback from one customer saying this app is fantastic, but it's going to take an army of people to maintain. Uh, I just want to be clear that um, yes, it, it may require uh, multiple people to maintain this app, but we've done our best to make sure that administration can be decentralized and kept to the minimum amount of work possible. Uh, and also put in the hands of the people on the ground in the office, rather than centrally managed by people who may not be actually in that office. And I'll talk in a lot more detail about how that feature works in a moment. Um, we've also decided that instead of being too specific with how offices are divided, we're just going to generically divide an office into spaces. And you'll hear me use the word spaces multiple times throughout this presentation. Spaces can be used for uh, uh, bookings, checking in and out and reporting. Um, so what this means is if someone with COVID-19 is uh, found on level four, you could then analyze, well, who went to the space, in this case, level four, in the last seven days, uh, and ask them to self-isolate if you wanted to. 
Um, uh, spaces is also a very flexible way of doing things. I was talking to somebody last week and they run a co-working space. And what they are going to do is they're going to go in and they're going to move all of the desks around. So they have the same desk capacity, but they will no longer have any meeting rooms and they will no longer have an event space. So, uh, and therefore they're enabling kind of the two meter gap between workstations and, and passageways and things like this. But in turn, they will have a completely different floor plan to the way their organization is or their, their uh, office is usually laid out, um, which is where spaces and kind of the generic nature of the word spaces comes into play. Uh, the app will reduce technical complexity by using QR code scanning for staff to check in and out of spaces, which in turn will automatically monitor if the space it has too many people in it and ensure that an organization can prove we did not go over capacity for that space. Um, a couple of people have pointed out that they don't believe their staff will use a QR code scanner uh, and they will not be diligent. Um, hopefully I'll be able to demonstrate how we can make people diligent uh, later on in this presentation. But uh, GPS is an option if your officers can use it. I just want to be clear, if you've got a multi-level office building, GPS is not very effective. It will just say that they're in the office. It won't say they're on level nine or level 14. So GPS is only really an option if you've got a kind of low rise, preferably you know, single story uh, office buildings or your staff are very spread out. And then finally, the app will provide clear information about data collection and privacy. So staff will know exactly what they are providing and what happens with their data. And I'll give you a demo of how we've done that in the app in a moment. So will the app Tra app track health information. So a big question and a question that, you know, even at Fliplet, I'm concerned about whether or not we should really do this. Um, and the answer is the app can do it if you'd like it to. By default, we are going to build this feature in, but you can turn it off or remove it if you do not want to use it. Um, one of the things that I was unsure about is, are we even legally allowed to do this? So I, I went digging um, and uh, I focused on the US and the UK, obviously different states in the US may have different guidance. Um, and, uh, and I know in the UK, uh, different parts of the UK also haven't committed to whether they're following English guidelines or not yet. Um, but what I've been able to find is that the US CDC uh, suggests that um, organizations or employers should create and test communication systems that employees can use to self-report if they are sick and that you can use to notify employees of exposure and closures. They go on to say that consider conducting daily in-person or virtual health checks, e.g. symptoms and or temperature screening of employees before they enter the facility in accordance with state and local uh, public health authorities and if available, your occupational health services. And then finally, they say, determine which employees may have been exposed to the virus and may need to take additional precautions. Inform employees of their possible exposure to COVID-19 in the workplace, but maintain confidentiality. Um, and I don't think any of us really want to go and you know, start a panic by running around and telling people, well, you know, John Smith has COVID uh, and you were in the office as him, so you, know, you should be concerned. I, I don't think any of us want to uh, kind of fuel uh, concern in our organization, but at the same time, we obviously don't want to uh, kind of endanger colleagues without being diligent. Uh, so it is a bit of a fine line. Um, and then finally, the UK is a little bit more vague on this, um, but the uh, but UK's uh, kind of employer employment uh, agency, I can't remember exactly what ACA stands for, but, but hopefully people in the UK know what I'm referring to, um, says if someone becomes unwell in the workplace with coronavirus symptoms, they should tell their employer immediately and go home. There is no explicit guidance that I was able to find from the UK suggesting that you have an obligation to tell staff that may have been exposed to COVID-19. Um, so we'll see. But uh, as we mentioned right at the beginning of this call, information is still coming out uh, very regularly. So key features. Um, I will probably not go through these in, in a lot of detail. I'm sure most people on this call uh, can read faster than I can speak. But just at a very high level, uh, the, the app will include information about how the organization is managing the return to work. So this will include a mixture of content in the form of static content, such as how to how you know how to enforce personal hygiene to reduce the spread of COVID-19 through to a news feed of the latest changes uh, specifically down to which office and also the news feed can support multiple languages um, which is a common request from organizations that uh, have multinational offices um, 
they may want officers posting in English, but they may also want to support local officers posting in their local language. Um, and if you don't understand French, as an example, you can filter them out. So you will not see them in your app, but obviously if, if you can speak French, they will be available to you. Um, the app will send notifications about important changes to, to officers, rules, or any other changes that you make to the app, such as adding and removing functionality. Um, and it will promote best practices. Uh, it will have a frequently asked questions, which will kind of act like a discussion forum. So basically uh, anybody who's asked a question before, assuming it's a good question and you wanna leave it in the app, uh, that question will be searchable and anybody uh, will be able to see the answer. Um, but you can also allow people to submit questions and then before they are posted into the app, uh, somebody can respond to them. So it's a very social, frequently asked questions, which will hopefully enable the frequently asked questions to evolve as uh, guidelines and requirements evolve uh, with returning to the office. And then finally, a couple of organizations have assumed that there's going to be a big increase in people trying to drive their cars instead of taking public transport. And if people are going to be driving their cars, more guidance will be required around how car parking will work. Uh, we're also going to track stuff status. Um, and so this means we'll have uh, potentially uh, a symptom tracker, whether people are working and not working, where people are working if they're in the office by checking in and checking out. Um, uh, we will have a workflow for approving and declining desk requests. Um, this is based around the assumption that uh, some areas may say, if you can work from home, you shouldn't be going to the office. We don't care why. And if that's the case, uh, then you probably want somebody screening, does this person really need to be going to the office? Um, you also have the reason for approving and declining workflow, the, the benefit being that if I have to have a, an important meeting um, and you know, I'm taking 20 people to the office because that's what's necessary, uh, that may mean some other people are no longer able to go to the office and therefore their requests for desks may be declined. Um, so the app will actually help you balance uh, how many people can be in the office at any one point. Um, there will be a people directory with information related to working status. So this means it'll be very easy for me to go and look at my colleagues and see are they working today or not. Um, and as I've mentioned, you'll optionally be able to uh, collect reasons why somebody may not be able to work as well in, in the case that they're showing symptoms of, of COVID-19. Um, people will be able to report issues in the app. Uh, issues can include things like, um, you know, out of hand sanitizer, or um, I saw this person coughing and sneezing. I really think somebody should ask them to go home um, uh, through to, uh, I don't feel comfortable getting in the lift in the office. Uh, the, the tape markings on the floor are too close together. Um, you know, you've suggested three people can fit in a lift. I think it should be two. So it's really designed to demonstrate that a, there's a formal place people can submit uh, issues or questions. Um, it's not necessarily public, um, so it shouldn't go into the frequently asked questions, um, uh, but it also demonstrates that um, the organization cares and the issue uh, feature can route the request to the right place intelligently. So if the issue is being reported about the Chicago office and Jerry's based in the Cleveland office, there's very little value in the query being routed to Jerry. It would be better routing that to somebody in the Chicago office immediately. Um, and then finally, uh, and Sean was the brainchild behind this idea, uh, the, the kind of canteen restaurant ordering and notification process. So I described this as the Uber Eats of internal office uh, ordering. The whole purpose behind this is to avoid overcrowding in, in areas where people would generally go and stand around at lunchtime. So if you know that your order isn't ready, don't go and stand around in the canteen, particularly if you go downstairs and, or upstairs, wherever your canteen happens to be, and you find out actually you're gonna be waiting in a queue for 15 minutes, what a waste. You might as well have just stayed at your desk and kept working and only gone up when you can actually get served. So hopefully that will, will help uh, people to more efficiently move around in the office. And I actually noted down uh, that we may want to um, also extend a feature that currently isn't in the app to support staggered starts, um, suggesting that you know, if only X number of people can get in a lift at a time, we don't want 50 people showing up at 9 a.m. because they'll all just stand around waiting for lifts. It would be a lot better to tell people like you come at, at um, 8.30, 8.45, et cetera. Um, so we'll consider that as well. 
uh, all of the features that I just listed are sitting on top of a suite of standard Fliplet features. So people that use Fliplet already are, are probably familiar with this, but I'll repeat them just to be on the safe side. And all of these features are, are incorporated into the Return to Office app. So the first is single sign-on, um, also known as uh, uh, Active Directory um, or Okta or um, uh, ADFS, uh, that basically would enable an organization to use their existing corporate logins to access the app. So SSO will be available, but if you don't want to use SSO or you're not in a position where you can, we can also offer a standard independent login and you can optionally allow staff to register and sign up on their own. We're also going to offer notifications via push in-app uh, notifications, email and SMS. Um, push and in-app and email has been around for a long time. We're adding SMS because we're aware that in some emergencies, you just want to send the message to everybody on every channel. It's better that the message gets through than the, organ than the person misses it because they're not paying attention or they, they uh, haven't checked a particular channel recently. Uh, usage analytics is a built-in feature. Uh, uh, private app deployment, I anticipate that the Return to Office app is not going to be a public app for most organizations, and therefore it will be distributed privately via their enterprise app store, also known as an MDM. Um, and the web app version of this, I anticipate, might be restricted to IP, uh, but um, it really depends on the level of sensitivity uh, uh, of information that's put in the app. Um, all data that's stored inside all Fliplet apps is always secure, and Fliplet's infrastructure uh, supports a very high capacity. So I had a couple of customers say, well, you know, we've got 6,000 staff and 50 offices, are you guys going to be able to cope? Uh, and at that, we say, well, we've already got thousands and thousands of people using our platform every single day at the moment, and hundreds of offices by comparison. So I don't think an extra few thousand or, or another 100 or 50 offices is going to make any big difference to our infrastructure. Um, contents, images, videos, uh, and files can all be included, as well as links to any existing resources. And Jerry mentioned earlier that some systems they've continued to uh, operate on Office 365, and some systems they've they've kind of used Fliplet apps for. Um, and I'd like to think that they can coexist and link between each other. Um, Fliplet app will also offer offline access, but only when the functionality provided is not uploading sensitive data. If somebody is checking in, if somebody is making a booking, if somebody is reporting symptoms, they will all be online only features. They will not be available to work offline because we don't want to run the risk that the information was not successfully sent to the server. Um, customers will be able to add, remove additional features uh, as, as they usually can with any of Fliplet app templates. And uh, Fliplet apps include instant app updates. So you can start off with a very simple return to office app and slowly introduce additional features as and when you're ready. You don't have to take everything I'm gonna demo uh, today. Uh, and a number of customers uh, produced uh, COVID-19 apps or have existing apps that they would want to add the, the return to office features to, you can merge this app with any existing Fliplet app if you want. So how does this app work from a management perspective? This is a little bit different to the standard uh, Fliplet app. So the standard way that uh, Fliplet apps are built and maintained is that an app builder and maintainer, this person here, logs into Fliplet Studio and produces and maintains apps on Apple and Android, uh, as well as a web app, and then staff are able to access the app. Um, anybody who's built an app with Fliplet will be familiar with this workflow. Because this has the potential for lots of different jurisdictions, all needing to have slightly different information in the app, um, each office may be managed differently as different restrictions are changed over time by different states and regions or countries. What we've done in this app is we've created this concept of office managers. So you can see here I've got office manager one, two, and three from London, New York, and Tokyo. And each of these office managers would have a login to the web app where they can manage the information for their office. So let me tell you a little bit more about the office manager role. So all of the features with the exception of one that I'm about to list are done without Studio. They're done directly in the app. Um, the office manager will be able to update the status and guidance for an office. Uh, they will be able to set up and manage spaces within the office. Um, a, a space could be a floor, a breakout area, or a meeting room, et cetera. They will be able to print QR codes for check-in and check-out and post them at the entrances to each space. 
to enable auditing of who goes in and out of each space. They will be able to answer questions posted into the discussion or the FAQ section of the app regarding the office that they manage. They will be able to manage uh, office booking requests. Um, they will be able to update the office use guidelines. They will be able to monitor the office usage using the dash dashboard feature, which I'll demo in a second. Um, they will also be able to notify staff if they should self-isolate because somebody reports to show symptoms of COVID-19. Uh, and they want to tell everybody who they think came in contact with them, you, you know, you may not want to come in for seven days. Let's see if you develop any further symptoms or you may want to go and get tested if that's an option as well. So that's the office manager role. As I mentioned earlier, a couple of people have expressed concern about how much effort it would take to manage this app. Uh, particularly where they've got lots of offices. Hopefully this uh, kind of decentralized approach to managing individual office content in the app will dramatically reduce the overhead of maintaining it. How does office check-in work? So this is a bit of a feature that uh, most people will be uh, unfamiliar with from Fliplet, but hopefully you've seen something similar before. So the office manager will create the spaces in the return to office app. They will then print a single page, which hopefully works well on US letter format. Um, but you can see here the screenshot is uh, in A4 format. Um, and it includes uh, two codes. The top one is a check-in code and the bottom one is a checkout code. And underneath that, you can scan that code if you want to access uh, the app or download it. So it's incredibly simple. Um, and all you do is print this out and stick it up on the door or the wall uh, next to the space uh, where people may enter and exit so that they are reminded to scan in. Um, uh, as I've mentioned, this will be an online only feature. So they will not be able to successfully scan in or scan out if their device isn't online. We don't want to run the risk that we're not collecting this data. Um, and by collecting the information reliably, we will be providing organizations who use it with an order trail, um, which you will also be able to export as a CSV file if you want to take the data somewhere else to do analysis on it. And I think a really huge feature of this, which is, you know, I have concerns about the adoption of this app. If people see this as a, a nice to have, like I don't really need this, I hope that by posting these office, these signs on doors uh, around the building, uh, there's really no excuse why people wouldn't be aware of engaging with this. Because the printout themselves includes instructions as to how to access the app and use it, uh, there's really no reason why uh, people, staff shouldn't be using it. So let me show you what this looks like. So I'm just going to stop sharing and, uh, and jump out of this and jump into Fliplet Studio. Okay. All right. Um, so this is uh, Fliplet Studio. And here you can see I've, I've got the onboarding screen. So this is just a, a simple onboarding screen that describes the key features of the app. Um, if you like these graphics, you're able to use them. They're open source. Um, and then I click get started. Now what it'll do is it'll take me to the login screen. As you can see here, it includes some uh, demo login details. Um, I can also register. Uh, and um, if, if uh, my organization wants to, we can use the corporate login using a single sign-on that I mentioned earlier. Uh, I recommend that uh, organizations include this disclaimer. Uh, the disclaimer explains how the app will work and what it'll be doing with, uh, with the data that's collected. It will also explain uh, expectations of the people that are going to use the app. And the idea is that they would sign up to this app before they return to the office so that the disclaimer is, um, is uh, a kind of front and center in people's minds uh, before they get too distracted with playing around with the app. And you can see here that I have to tick this box and click continue to proceed. Once I've done that, I get taken to the menu. Now this is quite simple at the moment and it's quite busy. Uh, this, is, this is still a work in progress. We'll be launching this uh, early next week, um, but uh, it gives you a good idea for the feature functionality. So the first thing is you can see at the top, I've got three kind of quick action icons, update status, check in out or book a desk. I'll show you each of those in a second. Um, and then underneath that, it's currently telling me I'm checked in to uh, the Chicago office on level 11. Now, if I've already left for the day, I can just click check out and that'll check me out. I don't have to go and find a QR code, scan it, um, because there's a good chance that I might be only going to the office once a week, for example. And if I'm only going once a week, I don't want to wait a whole week before I can check out again. So um, we figured building a checkout capability into the app is important. Um, but if you want to check in, you've got to physically be near the barcode. Um, if I wanted to update my status, 
I can, uh, the, the purpose of status is once a week, I tell my colleagues my intention. And this is a very uh, a kind of simple way that I can tell my colleagues where they can expect to find me. So you can see here, I can just say, okay, Monday I'm going to the office, uh, the next couple of days I'm working from home, and then I'm on vacation on Friday. Uh, so you know, don't be surprised if I'm not responding. Don't worry, I'm not unwell. It was planned, I wasn't gonna be there. Then I, I can answer two simple questions. Uh, have you had any COVID-19 symptoms over the last seven days? And has anyone you live with had COVID-19 symptoms in the last 14 days? Um, I can also include notes here if, if I think that that is relevant for my colleagues to understand my answers and I click submit. Now, this information about have you had any symptoms isn't necessarily shown to anybody else in the organization. It might just be used by the office managers to do their, their best to keep the, the workplace safe and then I click Submit. So the idea is that the app will remind me to do that once a week. When I'm then at the office and I wanna check in, uh, I would visit the attendance screen and I would get some form of, of scanning, uh, barcode scanning interface that looks like this. Um, because this is a web app, I'm not able to demo in real time the barcode scanning, but trust me, it works. Um, and then once I've successfully scanned, I'll hopefully get a green tick. It'll tell me I've been checked in and optionally, I can say if I have any guests with me and click save. If there are any issues, I can just click scan again. It'll take me back to the scanning screen and off I go, I can just rescan. So that's pretty simple, pretty powerful, but pretty simple. And then finally, I can also book a desk. So as you can see here, these are my existing bookings. You can see that one of them has been approved and one of them is currently uh, not approved. If I wanna add a new booking, I just click the plus button uh, and I pick the office. Um, and then the, the spaces will automatically be filtered by that office. So I can pick the, the office. You can see here it's saying how many spaces are available, which is important. There's no point in me booking a space that's already been booked up. Um, and then I can, I can book multiple days at once, just because, uh, you know, I think there's, um, we don't want to make it that you have to book every single day. Uh, we believe that that's a bit too much friction, um, but we also don't want to make it so easy that you can book for three months in advance. As we know with recurring meetings and meeting rooms, it's highly likely that, that people will book way in advance and then, and then won't necessarily show up. Um, you could set an arrival time and a departure time. This information can all be adjusted by the office uh, manager. So when I'm accepting this, if I say, well, actually there's 50 people showing up at 8 a.m., I could tweak that to say come at 8.30. Um, and I can put in the total number of people. So if I was having a client meeting, I could put in, I actually need three people, um, which, is, which is relevant. Um, and, and any notes for the, the reviewer. You might wanna change notes for the booking reviewer to be something along the lines of like, why do you have to travel to the office or why can't this be done remote, et cetera. You may want to do that from a perspective of auditing as well. And then I click request booking and uh, it, it, will, it will trigger an email off to the relevant office manager. And when the office manager accepts or declines my request, I will then be notified. So that's, that's the, the booking. So we've got a news feed. It's a fairly standard news feed. I'm not gonna show you that. We've got COVID-19 guidance, which is really just information about, this is what, these are the rules we're following. Um, and as I mentioned, these can be tailored on a per office basis, or you can just keep them high level. Um, uh, we believe that different organizations are, are gonna to wanna to have different sets of information on this screen. So we're, we're going to provide some high level materials, uh, but organizations will then be able to change it. Um, people directory, this is quite different to the normal directories, I'm sure you've already noticed. So for example, uh, Karen Brown, you can see here, uh, she's going to be working at home on Monday, at home on Wednesday, and on Friday she's having a vacation, and on Tuesday and Thursday she's intending to be in the office. If I click through, I can see a bit more information. I can also see that her status note, oh dear, she's saying she's unwell, but she's told us she's gonna come into the office maybe we should get in touch with Karen and have a conversation with her. And I can also see that she last updated on the 13th of May, so at least I know the information is relevant. Um, so there are a couple of really like minor but very important changes we've made to the directory. Uh, we've also got the office status. So let's have a look at, uh, at the, the Rush, uh, Paris office. So in here, you can see that it's now listing the individual spaces with the number of desks available and the amount of, uh, of uh, open or unbooked desks. And if I want to, I, I can have a shortcut here to click book, uh, which will take me straight through preset Paris, preset level four desk area and enable me to very efficiently place a booking for that area. Um, also, I can, I can see not to waste my time if there are no available spaces, 
there's no point going and looking. Um, and up here, you can see the manage space button. This will only appear for office managers and this will enable them to go into a series of management screens to manage this information. You can also see right at the bottom here, it's got status notes and it currently says no restrictions. If you had some additional restrictions, for example, uh, currently level four is closed, somebody reported COVID symptoms, the cleaners will be in later this week to, to do a very deep clean, that is now shut. You can put that in here in case people are surprised why their booking got canceled uh, for a desk. It's because we, we were forced to take uh, 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 action. Um, uh, so uh, just, uh, we've also got the order food capability. So you'll be able to upload a spreadsheet of the food products from the canteen. Hopefully that makes uh, uploading information easy. Yes, before anybody tells me, this is not a picture of Coca-Cola, I know. <laughs> um, so I can go in, I can see the information about the, the product. Um, and you can see down here, I've already got some items in my checkout. If I go to my checkout, it basically is a list of the items. I can delete them from my checkout. I can then specify if I want to pick, uh, specify a time for picking up. So like, let's say I eat lunch at 2 p.m. Well, I don't want it, make, you know, I don't want my sandwich ready to go at 12. So I specify 2 p.m. here. I can specify it's collect or deliver. If it's deliver, I get to specify where I am in the building. So they'll come and find me. Again, this uh, helps to remove overcrowding in canteen or busy, uh, uh, common areas and you can see you've got the notes field as well. So you click submit. That will then send uh, the order through to the canteen. The canteen will have a computer or an iPad sitting there, very similar to kind of what Uber Eats has in restaurants where it just has a display. As orders come in, the screen will flash, new orders will pop up. Uh, somebody can tap on the order, see the order, fulfill the order, and when it's fulfilled, click fulfilled. Um, if they're not able to fulfill the order, they can reject the order. The person will be told and they can resubmit another order. Um, so it's a, it's a pretty simple flow. We're deliberately not getting involved in the uh, payment process. We know most organizations already have existing payment systems for their canteens. We are not getting involved in that space. You will continue to manage payment as you currently would. And uh, finally, uh, I'm just going to, oh, actually I'll quickly show the settings. So in the settings, you can configure your, your notification settings as well as configure other details about yourself. The key thing here is being able to say, I want push notifications, email and SMS, which hopefully most people will configure. Uh, and then finally, we've got the dashboard. So I'm gonna flick over to um, uh, kind of computer view. I don't think this is the type of thing people are gonna be looking at on their phones. Um, and you can pick the date period that you want. Um, you can pick the office. Uh, so I'm gonna pick London. And you can see here, it's got office capacity is a total of 150 across all spaces. It's got bookings for the 13th of May is sitting at 89 and it's got 65 staff have currently checked in. So this is a real time dashboard. If I scroll down a little bit, I get a breakdown by space. So the top figure is capacity, then you've got booked, then you've got checked in. So you can see here that um, the capacity on level two is 45, only 15 people have booked it for today and so far there are seven there. Um, whereas uh, level four small meeting rooms is getting quite close to capacity uh, with it all booked up and already seven people are there. What I'm obviously concerned about is whether more people check into the level four meeting rooms than we can actually fit. And then finally, I'm just going to try this once more. Um, down the bottom here, you get a detailed breakdown of exactly who is checked in. So you can see that uh, Tiger Nixon uh, booked level 11. His booking started at 1.40, it ended at 7.40. He checked in at 1.40 and he hasn't currently checked out. And I, can, I will be able to filter this down to the individual space, the individual person. So as an office manager, I can see exactly what's happening in my building at any time. So that, uh, that basically concludes the uh, demo. Um, so very, very quickly, because I know we're running out of time, uh, Fliplet will provide uh, content examples, as you've seen, guidance preparing and merging or creating new apps with this template, assistance training staff on how to use it, assistance launching the app and, and encouraging usage. And we will also be providing spreadsheet templates to accelerate data load for people, offices, spaces, and products. So um, before you, you kind of go ahead and build this app, I recommend you, you fill those uh, spreadsheets with your data. Hopefully you can get the data from existing systems and then you can just copy and paste the data across. 
Currently, we already have a number of future enhancements ideas, such as checklists to help staff and office managers monitor office compliance, assessments to ensure staff and offices are meeting the guidelines. The UK has, has said that they want uh, employers to regularly assess themselves against the COVID-19 workplace standards. Um, uh, we can also add quiz or e-learning capabilities to ensure that staff understand the guidelines. It means that I'm not just you know, glancing over them and I don't have to pay any attention. You can actually verify, do you understand what we are doing? Um, a number of people have asked about uh, being able to book specific desks within spaces via floor plans. That is something Flipflip can do. We're also acutely aware that that would require quite a lot of management and maintenance. Um, so hopefully this, this kind of halfway point of this space can hold this many people is sufficient. And of course, if when I get to that space, there's only a certain number of desks, hopefully it'll be obvious. Um, and some people have also asked for the ability to have a QR code on every single desk so that people literally go and and scan, this is where I'm sitting, um, so that organizations know remotely exactly where those people are in the building. And we can do that as well. Um, so if you're interested in using this, uh, the, I guess the, the first thing is to confirm what features you'd like to use, start collecting the data, um, and possibly start having conversations with the office manager role users to ensure that you have the, the resources in place to manage it. Um, and of course, get in touch with us if we can help. So that, uh, that concludes the demo and, and presentation today. Uh, I guess, uh, Jerry or Sean, we'll start with you. Did either of you have any questions or comments you'd like to add? Yeah, I just think briefly, I, I can see some opportunities for us as we figure it out. Uh, I like how you did spaces. Um, and the only other comment I would say is, it made me think about how do we manage visitors. Uh, it'd be interesting to have the office manager have a way to check them in and out. That way, broadly, we would know because you have a visitor comes in and then a, a vendor says, oh, yeah, we found out yesterday they have some exposure. I think we could then look back very quickly. So just a thought there, maybe that, that is a feature. Yeah, thanks. Great, great ideas, Jerry. Sean, did you want to add anything? Yeah, no, I think that um, the demo was really helpful. I was just thinking as you were talking through about how on earth we would um, allow people to book certain desks and actually if people were able to book different desks does that create a hygiene issue because we know that coronavirus um, can be around for a few days so people might be using the same kit and actually in practice you'd probably want people to go back to their own desk and rather than trying to understand spaces and understand all that actually having a way of being able to just say to every individual in the firm give us the name of any individual in the organization where your desk is within two meters to others so for me that's two individuals um, in, in my firm and I would then know if any of those two individuals had booked to come into the office and it was below a certain number or percentage then I wouldn't be allowed to come in because I would be in close proximity to them but it's just a really simple way for people to be able to understand spaces without actually having to think about you know the spatial um, coordinates of areas which is just really complex but actually just associating it to who do you sit near and actually you're just going to sit at your own desk would make it a bit easier. So it was just an idea I had when you were talking, but not all really helpful. Um, yeah, that's a good suggestion, Sean. Thank you. Um, Michael, Chris from Fliplet, were there any other questions that we received via chat that we should answer? Uh, no, I didn't see uh, any, any chats uh, come in. So no, you're good. Oh, hang on, we've just had one come in. No, that's a private one. No, no, no questions for you, Ian. Okay, excellent. Well, I'll take it that I did a good job in that case, not that people fell asleep. Um, just briefly, if, uh, if this interested you, we have a number of upcoming webinars over the next uh, few weeks. So I've got one next week about optimizing business processes with apps and Fliplet. Um, we've got how law firms are using prefab apps, uh, case studies from the legal industry on the 27th of May. And we've got our new code snippet library uh, that we are doing a webinar about on the 28th of May. Uh, and you can register for all of those at fliplet.com slash webinars. So thank you very much, everybody, for joining us today. And thank you, Jerry and Sean, for uh, sharing what your organizations are doing and, and also your perspectives at the end. I really appreciate your support. And I hope everybody has a fantastic day and stay safe. <laughs>